Hey guys, got a secret for you. Going down to a tavern underneath this house. Come join me today in the build show. Okay, so we're in Fort Worth. This is a 1920s house, also by John Staub, just like the other house that we redid over there. It is a regional architect, it's a colonial revival house, okay? And the underneath the house got excavated. And so we're, we're turning it into a tavern. Now, I don't know if you remember that I bought a room from an architectural dealer in New York, the Rockefeller Library. It was a, not the Rockefeller, a Rockefeller. One of their libraries in their New York apartments had this, oak paneling in it and so what we've done is we've taken some oak paneling and we've you know integrated it into the basement and i'm going to show you kind of how we took original panel cut it up made it fit and then built new panel to match all inside come join me Okay, so welcome to the tavern. And what, what's gonna happen is you come down these stairs, there's gonna be a wine room that he's working on there. There is a door that's gonna be centered right here that will be a little bit hidden. Maybe you push it, it slides across, it goes into this panel here. And then you walk down and you're centered on this fireplace. Now, you may remember this fireplace when I talked about English paneling at my office, but this was that fireplace over mantle that was from the Rockefeller apartment. Look at, look at the details on this. This was done in the 20s, but notice the hand carving, this kind of ionic capital here, these fluted brackets, and then this strap carving. The strap carving is basically carving that that is looks like straps okay that are that are laid flat okay so there's not a bunch of flowers and stuff instead there's these geometric patterns that go through here that that are pretty typical now i think it comes from belgium i think that's where the strap carving comes from but the english used it a lot and so these pilasters are fluted pilasters sometimes you'll see pilaster and it'll be paneled with this kind of strap carving here as well so Bunch of cool details. This kind of arrangement where you've kind of got these L's going around a center panel, also pretty typical. Also this mantel shelf with the carving in it is also very typical. And when I say typical, I'm talking about period of rooms. This is Tudor and Jacobean, so we're talking 15 and 1600s. If we look at those traditional rooms, if we look at those rooms that were made at that time, they have a lot of this detail down. These panels and the way they did these panels, and I don't know if you remember me talking about mason miters. And what a mason miter is has to do with masonry, okay? And so a mason worked out that on the panel that they made in a stone piece, they beveled the bottom edge of that panel so that water didn't sit there. Woodworkers copied that and brought it inside in this English tradition. And so we have this mason joint in this in this paneling. And what we've done is we had probably, let's just say there's 100 feet of paneling in here. We had probably 40 feet, 50 feet, okay? So we had these pilasters, we had walls and paneling, we had this carving, the strap work carving and the way it was worked out. But this is now gonna be superimposed or, or rebuilt all along in here. And the way we did that is we, figured out a, a panel size, a proportion basically that, that works here. And you see us replicated in it as we go around this room. You'll also see these here, these linen fold panels. And so linen fold patterns came from a different historic job, but also from the same dealer in New York. So you see it on the bar here where we're now kind of going to treat this as a piece of furniture where you've got these linen fold panels here and then the strap work carving panels above. Now you see it, you know, we've got most of this wall done, about half of that wall done, and then we're going to be working on these other walls, but we basically are taking the past, right? We're taking the, the paneling that, that, that you know came from that historic room and then we are copying it using it using the mason miters using the wood the wood here is all quarter sawn white oak okay and so quarter sawn gives us these kind of flex and these patterns inside the wood which really show it off the other thing we did we had these panels fumed now fuming is when you take ammonia and you expose the wood especially oak to ammonia and it causes a chemical reaction that the wood actually turns brown and so there's tannins 
humans inside this wood that and they discovered this that when they put furniture into the barn and then the, the cow urine and horse urine with those ammonia smells they actually realized it was turning the, the furniture brown so around the turn of the century fuming was a big deal and very important so Gustav Stickley did a lot of fuming anyway we have fumed all this paneling so that the natural grain color really is exposed and it's really this beautiful brown chocolatey tone here that we're getting so looking at the past trying to figure out you know how this lays out and then reintroducing it into this room kind of builds this magic final thing I want to highlight is the ceilings and kind of the way this laid out what we're trying to convey because we've got steel posts we've got concrete beams that we had to cover up so we've got really got a smorgasbord of, of different beams that we have to work around so what we're wanting to look and convey is that it's a timbered ceiling we're wanting to take you back to a, a different time and place and so you'll see there's a hierarchy of beams this beam right here is obviously very big covering up a concrete beam it goes to a secondary beam and then goes to a, a smaller beam and so we're, we're trying to convey that there's a hierarchy of beams in here we're trying to make you feel like you're underneath the house which we are, but it's not been a timber framed house. This is actually concrete and, and wood. So that's the, the effect we're trying to create here. Again, we've, we've bought beams, we've bought salvaged oak lumber, okay? So that the wood has natural knots and characters and defects in it so that they look like old beams. And you'll see some checks in the wood and some knots and different things like that. That's all by design so that this room really feels old and it really feels like you're in a different place in a different time. Kind of the fun down here will also be this bar there will be a kegerator in another room kept cold and then there will be a tap coming out of the wall we've got inset areas here where we're going to have you know glasses and, and, and whiskey and other things there'll be storage underneath here talk about going to a different place at a different time really you know, transporting yourself walking behind there, door you know slides open almost like a speakeasy right where you go back to a different place in time but the character and the details of the woodwork should be really special okay guys going back in time right we've come underneath this house an old speakeasy we're in a 1920s Tudor revival prohibition bar maybe right so really kind of a fun space down here but we we get the magic okay by copying the past and we look at the historic paneling we look at the things that were done in the 1920s and we match them right we copy them make them work again and we really create a special space look if you're interested in these kind of details you can join me on the patreon page patreon passion for craft at the journeyman level I'm sharing details like this from historic pattern books so that you guys can work and figure out how to build it say you got a client who says hey can you build me one of those English rooms how do you do it I got things that I'm dropping and sharing with people so that we can all raise our game and become master builders thanks for watching I'm Brent Hull